Let's talk about the Lorentz system. This is a classic. A lot of people have seen pictures of this before, but let's set this up somewhat slowly, understand the problem that is trying to be solved with the Lorentz system. This all goes back to a guy, Ed Lorentz, 1963, doing meteorology, studying convection in the atmosphere. So how does this work? You've got hot air on the bottom, and then as it rises, it's cooler on the top. When you have this temperature gradient, you can either have the temperature just sort of slowly flow from hot to cool, or, or with some instability, you can get convection rolls where the fluid goes up, and then it cools, and it comes back down, and then it keeps churning. All that is the impetus for a very simple model set up by Lorenz. It starts with the Boussinesque equations. These are equations having to do with the convection of a thin layer of fluid. Now, these equations are PDEs, partial differential equations. Ouch, not easy to work with. As a dynamical system, this would be an infinite dimensional dynamical system. Not so good. We want a simple model. So the next step is to do what is called a Fourier mode truncation. You expand out all the Fourier modes of your solution to the PDE, and then you chop off everything except the dominant modes. And without going into any details, what Lorentz did was he took the first three dominant terms, one for velocity, two for temperature, set up a coupled three-dimensional system of differential equations. And here they are, the Lorentz system, continuous time, 3D, is given by the following. dx dt equals sigma times quantity y minus x, dy dt equals r times x minus y minus x times z, and dz dt equals x times y minus b times z. Now what is this? Well, x, y, and z are the amplitudes of these three dominant modes. They're the things that we care about. These coefficients, sigma, r, b, they are all positive, and they can be thought of as parameters. Sigma is a Prandtl number that has to do with the fluids and thermodynamics. Likewise, r is something called a Rayleigh number. And then this last constant, b, is something to do with the geometry of the setup, the aspect ratio of the layer of this fluid. Physics, physics, physics. We don't need to worry about that so much. Let's focus on the system, which is not so bad. It's almost a linear system. The only things that are getting in the way of this being a linear system are those two terms, x, z, and x, y. So this isn't going to be so bad at all. What are we going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to take this system, we're going to look at those three parameters. It's kind of inconvenient to work with three parameters, so for various physical reasons, it makes sense to fix two of them, sigma and b. The classic values that Lorentz used were 10 for sigma and 8 thirds for b, and then take that last parameter, r, and let's use that as the dial. Let's vary r, c, what happens? For low values of R, it's as if there's a, a very small gradient in the temperature. And then for larger values of R, there's a higher gradient. There's more instability in the fluid. So that's the plan. We're going to take this system. We're going to vary the parameter. We're going to do the things that we do. Find equilibria, look at bifurcations. Hopefully, this won't get too complicated.